And we welcome you back to the Land and Bussy program. Glad you can join us here on the Brave Sports Network, 91.7 WPRL and WPRL.org, as well as Facebook Live. Our producer, Cedric Tillman, Charles Edmond here, head coach Land and Bussy. They got the lights here. Man, it's the brightest that I've been a part of here. Bright lights, and that's what it's all about here. The bright lights of SWAC basketball and all Corn Braves basketball. Coming up at the bottom of the hour, we'll hear from Nate Kilbert. Tough game for the Lady Braves. As they lost to Jackson State, trying to get healthy, trying to win some games as we get ready for our home opener, which is coming up here in a little bit over a week. You can text a question, 601-301-2611. You can tweet a question. I'm on Twitter, Tall Man Radio. Glad you can join us. As we have Braves head coach Landon Bussey up first. Coach, how you doing, sir? Doing good. Doing good. Can't complain. Well, you talk about complaining. I must share this. When I pulled up into the arena at the parking lot, I can hear you all the way out in the parking lot. And there was some complaining going on about the game the other day and trying to get better. Uh, so let's let's jump right into it. You know, the season, um, conference season opening up against Jackson State. Uh, obviously, this team, you know, they hit a big shot here. Colty Young hit a three here last year, and he had a big game uh, at the game the other day. Uh, just talk about the preview leading up to that game, Jackson State. What do we expect? And just your thoughts overall about this game in which we gave up almost 90 points and the most that you've given up in a SWAC regular season game um, in a long time. Um, <clears throat> first game at conference, so you don't want to get, you know, too high. You don't want to get too low after the loss. So the biggest thing us for right now was us just trying to rebuild, um, for things that we already have in place and get back to the drawing board, make some adjustments, make a few changes, and get prepared for Alabama A&M. So it's a lot of stuff that went, you know, that I would have done differently um, as I go back and watch film to, g to, to give us a better chance of being successful against Jackson State. So I just got to make those adjustments um, moving forward. What was the scout on Jackson State? You saw what they did in non-conference they beat Missouri, and like a number of teams had some big out-of-conference wins. What was the scout on JSU? Well, one thing we wanted to focus on is keeping them off the offensive glass, limiting their second-chance opportunities, um, which we did not do a good job at. That's one of our focus that we focused on all week, and we did not do a great job of it. And we knew that if we did not keep this team under, you know, maybe 11 offensive rebounds, um, 11 and under, preferably 7, 8, then it would be a long night. Yeah, they had 15 offensive boards in this game. Uh, so, if you look at this lineup, Coach, if we look at Jackson State, Colty Young, Jordan O'Neal, Ken Evans, Chase Adams, and Zeke Cook. What was it about this this lineup that was a challenge? It was Colty Young. I mean, he came out, he was on fire. I mean, he had 26 points, wasn't, you know, had his career high against us. Wasn't expecting for him to shoot the ball as well. He shot the ball. But, you know, they playing home, front of their home crowd, rivalry game, and they was the better team that night. We led by four, two or three times in the first half, and we even led by four with five minutes left in the first half. So talk about the pace of the game. I know you wanted to slow them down defensively. Your your goal, at least this year, is to keep teams under 60, really really turning the heat up defensively because you feel like your team can lock teams down. But the back and forth, big crowd at the Williams Activity Center, I mean, we had a four-point lead with five minutes left in the first half. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's a game of runs. Um, they withstood our run, and when we went, when they went on a run, um, we didn't do a good job of, you know, hitting them with a different um, combo. So they did a good job of withstanding our run. We didn't withstand their runs. So just moving forward, we got We get, can't co keep going on these long stretches without scoring. You know, sometimes we go three, four minutes without putting the ball in the basket. That really hurts you defensively um, when you're not able to put the ball in the basket. And they, they have confidence going. They have a rhythm. They have – um, some type of flow in their offense. It's hard to defend them when they like that. Yeah, and they were able to get out and run. And I can't remember a game just like giving up almost 90 points in a conference game. You have to go back to your first year, the COVID year, which you gave up that many points, close to 90. And we'll talk about that. But they had a lot of straight line drives to the rim, a lot of dunks. And I don't probably I counted probably six or seven. You may have counted them, but more than what you would expect and more to your liking. Talk about trying to defend the rim because they had the straight line drives. Well, I don't think it, it had anything to do with them. Um, more so, it had a lot to do with us. Defensively, we're not uh, we're not a great defensive team right now. Um, our mindset's got to 
in practice got to do a better job of focusing. Uh, my coaches and, and I have to do a better job of holding them accountable in practice and just, you know, just watching more film. But right now we're just not a great defensive team, um, and I think we'll be better and better every single game. Your starting lineup, Jeremiah Kendall is averaging 16 and 6, one of the top scorers in the conference, top on the boards. You have John Benet, Jeremiah Gambrell, D.K. Thorne, and Byron Joshua. So we're familiar, obviously, with Thorne, Joshua. Talk about Gambrell, the Prairie View transfer, and Benet. I know you've been working with your bigs. We know what Jeremiah Kendall can do. You have Sinkovich in the middle. So just talk about getting that double low post action started. At least that's what you had started in this game. Yeah, um, just trying to pound them on the inside. I think we did a great job of attacking the offensive glass. I uh, really want to beat them up on the inside. We had 18 offensive rebounds. Um, and I think we could get close to 20 each game uh, with just our force as far as Kendall and um, Jai. And then you have Bayard and Sinkovich and, you know, um, DK and Mike. They do a good job of crashing offensive glass too. So we wanted to try to pound them. We knew that we could have won the rebounding battle. Um, I thought that we, we could win 10-plus just because how well we focus on boxing out, rebounding down, limiting teams to one shot. But, you know, the rebounding battle was 37-37, to 37, which wasn't a good thing for us. We have to win 10-plus rebounds every game. 10-plus rebounds every game, which means more opportunities in terms of just trying to score the basketball. But talk about how that translates into more for your team when you win the rebounding battle. Oh, I mean, it gives you more second-chance opportunity. It's, it could suck the, the, their defense in and, and – when you get in a second chance opportunity and you kick the ball out and they hit a three, that hurts you. That hurts you. Um, just going back down on the offensive end. And it also gives us momentum on the defensive end. You know, so that's it's just a lot offense and defense that we're not doing a good job of right now um, that we could do a better off to help our defense. You talk about your defense. Let's talk about your offense. Uh, in this game, we know what Joshua can do. We know what Thorne can do. They combine for five of 22 shooting. We know what they can do. We've seen what they can do. Talk about the tough shooting day from those two. They just got to be better. It's just flat out simple. They have to be better. It's no, it's no, you know, we talked, you know, we had a discussion today as far as, you know, a team meeting that, you know, for one, it starts with me. I got to be better. I got to do a better job of putting my team in the best situation to be successful. And my coaches, they got to be better. Um, the players, Byron, starting with him, and DK, they got to be better. The managers, everybody right now needs to be better. And, you know, we got about 48 hours to get better. So whatever that, whatever your area is, uh, from the managers to the assistant coaches to the players to the trainers, everybody has to get better. So um, for them to shoot five for 22, is, is, that's, that's below, below average. You know, both of them guys can't shoot the, have bad shooting nights like that and expect for us to win, especially if we're not going to sit up here and defend and give team 88 points. So it's, it's simple. They have to be better. You know, we have to be better. I have to be a lot better. I got to do a better job of putting these guys in a better situation to be successful. Um, so do with my coaches. They we got they got to do a better job of holding these guys accountable. So it'll, it'll, it'll all work itself out. We had the league with five minutes left in the first half. We trailed by five at the half. Uh, what was your speech to your team in the locker room? On the road, we had the lead two-thirds of the way through. And Jackson led by five. You felt like, okay, we can slow things down defensively, shoot a little better, maybe we can win this thing. Yeah, I, th I felt as though if we, you know, we down five, I thought I felt as though we got their best run. Um, you know, the energy in the locker room was a little down. I thought that they wanted to be up. But like I said, it's a game of runs. We came out. They scored the first two points. Now we down seven. We traded baskets for a little bit. Um, but I was just telling them, man, we got to get out here and compete the second half. Like this, ha this half right here is the team in front of you that's stopping you from achieving one of your goals. Um, so, you know, we'll be fine. Um, I expect for us to um, Thursday show a different brand of basketball, and hopefully we can be successful. You, you do a good job in keeping the intensity up. You're fired up and your energy on the sideline. Did you feel like that intensity and energy with a big rival game, your first conference game, eager to get a win, hadn't had a win in almost 50, almost 60 days, uh, did you feel like that energy and intensity was there from the start against Jackson State? Yeah, I think it was there, but, you know, it's hard to have, you know, every, for anybody to have energy when, you give, when you're giving up so many straight line drives, when you're giving up so many dunks and um, their crowd is getting behind them and, 
you know, you see all the offensive rebounds be giving up. I mean, what, what am I having energy for, for watching us get dunked on? So, you know, it's hard. It's hard when we're not playing the right basketball right now. And, you know, you know I think hopefully these guys got the message. If they didn't, you know, we, we'll continue to work, continue to work, um, and find a way to win a basketball game. Right now is our only focus is right now is trying to find a way to just win one basketball game. If, if these guys could see that they can win a basketball game, um, I think another win will come right behind that. Yeah, with the non-conference slate that we had, the wins that we've had were here. Miles College as well as Xavier. We had some close games. The UAB game early in the year. Central Arkansas, we were right there. J just talk about the level of confidence through non-conference. You ended right before Christmas against George Washington, uh, Maryland. Just that confidence aspect, getting ready for conference. Did you feel like in the tough grind and the tough travel of non-conference, you felt like, we could break through and get over the hump at least at some point during non-conference. Yeah, I thought so. I thought so that we could have uh, did a better job in conferences, you know, non-conferences, getting some momentum. That's the biggest thing is trying to get some momentum in conference and heading into a, a, a tough rivalry game in Jackson. But we wasn't. You know, we wasn't. Um, we was right there a few games, the UAB, the George Washington. We was right there. And we didn't close the game out. You know, we we haven't learned how to close out games yet. So hopefully these next two days we do a little more practice as far as game like situation and see if we can close out the game start, uh, Thursday. We talk about the negatives, the positives, anything, even if we didn't win the game, and that's the number one goal. What positives did you take from the Jackson State game? Um, I think Jay Bennett did a great job. Um, I was very impressed with him, 15 points, you know, six rebounds, uh, four offensive rebounds. So when you get him and J.K. crashing the glass like that, we're hard to deal with. Now I just got to get one more third rebounder to get down there and, and fight with them guys. 37 all on, on the glass. So we, we're despite the front line drives to the rim and all that, we were able to kind of hang tough on the boards, I thought. You no, know, we, we, we should have dominated them on the glass. We shouldn't be hanging with anybody right now. You know, we sh it should have been a clear dominance in them on the glass. Um, I think that, you know, our post players and the depth that we have as far as the beef we have in the post players, we should have been, you know, pretty dominant. You know, just to hang with them, um, that's, 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 to me, that's not good enough. Um, we should have been dominant just due to um, them being shorthanded. We're talking with Braves head coach Landon Bussey. You can text a question, 601-301-2611. You can tweet a question. I'm on X, uh, Tall Man Radio. I was, we were talking before we went on about your defense, and one of the things I asked you, and you kind of thought about it a little bit, as much as you stress defensively, you know, keeping teams in check, we're at giving up is non-conference an average of about 88, 89 a game, and Jackson had 88. So the question, Coach, why aren't we as good as we, as we know that we can be defensively at this point in time with more than half of the season well, I think it's a lot of different factors and variables that come into place. Just when you're watching film, when I go back and try to fix these problems, I also look at last year game. And one time I look, I see on the court, you have Byron Joshua, you have, you know, Otis Walker, you have D.K. Thorne, and then you have D.J. Bruton, and then you have Don Trout, that five out there. Okay, I'm looking at it. All five of those guys have some type of synergy and play with each other now for a year, and they understand what I want to do defensively, how I want to play defensively. Um, you know, the turnover we had this year really is really hurting us right now as far as how many guys left, how many guys tra um, graduated or transferred, whatever the case may be. It's, it's kind of hurting us right now just due to we haven't turned that corner yet defensively, everybody. And so, if one person is on the court, have one breakdown, it messes your, your whole defense up. And it starts with my coaches and I holding these players accountable in practice. When we see something, we got to address it. When we see something, we got to get on them. You know, they have to really understand that any breakdown from one person on the defensive end it's really going to kill this play. It can't be all four guys is unified and then this other guy over here is doing his own thing. 
So I think that's the biggest thing is right now is these guys have to really understand of what it looks like to defend um, and put on an all-corn uniform. The way you're talking about defensively being in a rhythm, it kind of reminds me, I mean, I'm an old guy, the Detroit Pistons, the bad boys, how they were such – locked down defensively during the Lambeer days that you heard the phrase playing on a string defensively. Is that kind of what you expect when this team is right defensively, everybody playing on a string, and it's almost like a a, a choreograph out there? Yeah, I mean, when when that ball moves, no matter where that ball moves, if that ball gets passed anywhere, everybody should be shifting. Everybody should be shifting, jumping to the ball, and it's it's like a string. Now, if you got three guys – jump into the ball and two guys isn't and the ball drives now you late is 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 this is this a lot that towards over we're not connected defensively we you know some guys is doing this and this guy over here is doing this when everybody all five guys got to be doing the exact same thing all five guys got to understand what we're trying to do and it's not like that right now so the way you really are intense on the defensive side the timing that it takes. Does it take a half a season? Does it take the grind of preseason? Does it take two-thirds of the season, even in the conference, where the light bulb goes off one game could be Thursday at A&M or Saturday at Bama State, and once they got it, then you can kind of take off from there. Because last year we lost the opening game here to Jackson State, and then we went on a roll, kind of the same type of thing. Yeah, I don't know how long it's going to take. Of course, I would like for it to take, you know, you know, 30 minutes for us to fix it. But I, I don't know how long it's going to take, but we'll see. Um, as long as we keep getting better, that's the only thing I can ask for. I don't want to take steps backwards. I want to continue to move forward. But um, to be honest, I have, no, I have no idea how long it's going to take. But there's a few changes, and we, we're just trying to continue to just search and, and think about different things that can do to help us be better. So, I mean, hopefully – these guys understand and make the adjustments sooner than later. What was the speech to your team in the locker room after the game? Mm, I was just happy how they got out there and played through the whistle. Um, I think we got down 17, but we cut it to eight by yeah. just not, but by not giving up the fight that we got out there and played with. I was proud about that. I wish we could have did a full 40 minutes of competing like that, but I think the last four or five minutes of the game, we really picked it up defensively. Yeah, I got the feeling that Jackson had a big lead, and they were just trying to coast a little bit, and, and you kept playing and creating turnovers and opportunities. Uh, I, one of the things I look at is those talking about opportunities. 50-50 balls, what we talk about in terms of loose balls on the floor. You t- talk to your team all the time about leaving your feet, diving in the stands, diving on the floor. I thought some of those 50-50 balls when the game turned, Jackson just got their hands on a few more of those and converted some of those. Yeah, I mean, they wanted it more. They made more championship plays than we did. I mean, you know, we, we, we get out there playing like, you know, somebody's supposed to give us a championship. Like, oh, we're all corn. You know, we have, we're back-to-back champions, and someone's going to give this to us. Like, we have no urgency. We, we have no chip on our shoulder right now. We're not, we're not playing with no competitive nature. We just out there, just out there right now, and think that somebody is going to give you something um, instead of going out there and taking what you want. And last year, I think we handed them probably one of the worst losses they've had at home. We won by 15. We were up by a lot more, but we we beat that team by 15 and kind of a, a wall-to-wall win there. So I'm, I don't know if you brought it up the fact that hey, when we stepped on that court in the Williams Activity Center last year, we we took it to them. So you expect that they were going to come out and, and come out with the energy in the first conference game. Yeah, I man, they was going to come out with energy regardless. Um, you know, it, it's tough when, you know, this is your rivalry school and this school has won two regular season championships the last two years. So, I mean, we, we got to understand that what's at state, you know, we're not going to catch no team off guard and say, oh, well, you know, I didn't know Alcorn wasn't going to come ready to play. We caught them off guard. No, we're going to get everybody's best shot. It's not one – time we're going to go and it's going to be that we caught them off guard now prior that could have been the situation you know years ago but right now you're going to get everybody's best shot everybody wants what you've been having for the past few years you and texas southern been having so you know you got to take it what it comes with it you know it's, a, it's one basketball game you know 17 more conference games to go 
we focus on winning this next game right here. We won't think about the Jackson State game. Yeah. It's, they say it's a marathon and not a sprint. 17 more games to go. Kind of a short week as you get ready to play Alabama A&M on Thursday and Alabama State on Saturday. Uh, those two teams wanted to play kind of classic-type games. They changed the schedule. They asked us if we would accommodate, and that's the case, and that's why we're playing on Thursday and Saturday instead of Saturday on Monday. Nate Kilbert will talk more about that and how that took place. But we'll take a break right here. When we come back, we'll look ahead to what we can expect here for these next couple of games, some good games in the conference in week one, including a close one with UAPB and Alabama A&M as we go to the new arena in Huntsville, and they got out of Pine Bluff with a one-point win, a place that's very tough to play and win, the Clemens Arena. Pine Bluff was, what, 7 of 28 from beyond the arc, and Alabama A&M won there at the Clemens Arena. So we'll talk about the Bulldogs and the Hornets when we come back here on the Land and Bussy Show. Um, can I get the now bar, please? One dollar. Have a good one. You got it. Hey, what's going on? Hey. Let me get a now bar. Sure. One dollar. Appreciate you. You got it. We don't fight fair, so we'll just fight harder. We didn't come here to play around. You're going down. Honestly, I hate you. I'm stronger than you. I'm more determined than you. We're going to beat you, Cancer. Because the American Cancer Society is on our team. And together, we're unstoppable. My name is John Calipari. I the program here from the Davey L. Whitney Arena. Some rough weather early in the day. It looks like things might be uh, brightening up a little bit. Some of the rough weather moving by us as we get ready to go to Alabama State and Alabama A&M. First things first in Huntsville. Coach, you get a chance to look at some of the, the scores from around the conference. I mean, Southern University, first-year coach Kevin Johnson. Southern will be coming here. Grambling will be coming here. By the way, with the new format, with Florida A&M and Bethune-Cookman coming into the league, some teams really going to play one time. So one year you'll play them at home, one year you'll play them on the road. Alabama State and Alabama A&M are those teams, as well as Southern and Grambling. We went to Grambling and Southern last year, one time. They'll come here coming up. But uh, you get a chance to look at some games around the league, Coach, uh, with the game one? Yeah, I, I got a chance to, um, just to see some of the scores. I know Southern beat um, Texas Southern, Grambling beat Prairie View. Um, Alabama State beat Valley, and Alabama A&M beat um, Pine Bluff, and I think Bethune beat FAMU. So, um, yeah. What are, What are your thoughts on just some of the scores and just – I'm sure you follow the teams even during non-conference. Uh, just even though it's game one, got 17 left, what, what are some of the things that jumped out at you from game one? From the other teams? Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> I don't care about that. I got I – got, I got one team I need that, that that's in some bad shape right now that I'm focused on. That we in some bad shape. That's the only team I'm worried about. Yeah. And so when you look at that, I mean, there's talking with fans and just people in general. Um, folks are obviously concerned what happened. And for you, I know you always like to run a steady ship, a steady situation. What's what's the one thing that Braves fans can, can kind of look forward to with this long marathon coming up, 17 games, including these two in Alabama? A better performance of giving better effort. That's all, you know, that's all anything I can ask for that you can see. Um, that's only I can ask for out of my players to give better effort. So it's better effort, you know, not sure what the score um, is going to indicate at the end of the game, but we're going to give better effort. We'll be better defensively. So let's start with Alabama A&M. We've got Thursday and Saturday games coming up. We go to the brand new arena in Huntsville. It's their second year. Looking forward to going there. Uh, what do you expect from Alabama A&M, a team, as we mentioned, they beat uh, UAPB on the road, 63-62. to 62. Uh, Valley had a lead against Bama State, let it slip away the other day. So that's going to be tough there at Valley. But what do you expect from Alabama A&M? I just expect for them guys to be tough. I think um, the coach over there does a great job of just making them guys compete. Um, they have a veteran group. 
um, coming back. They've been there for for a few years now. They're going to be tough. They're going to compete. They're going to press. They're going to trap all over the place. Um, it's our job to make sure that we get out there and compete and play hard as well, too. Do you get a chance to look at Alabama State in the final minute against uh, against Valley? Did you look at that? Yeah, I saw that. That was crazy. I saw that. Um, I think Valley hit a three right there in the corner about 10 seconds ago. And then um, Alabama State ended up finding a way to be tough and, and, and go down there and win a game. And that's what we're seeing. I mean, if what we've seen some crazy games so far in, in game one. And just to your point that every game you got to come out and, and get ready to go because I think it's competitive all across the board. And you're going to get every team's best shot, regardless of whether it's here on this floor coming up in the next week and a half or at A&M or Bama State. I'm sure, you're, I'm sure you press that every single practice. Like, no one's going to lay down for this team. You want back-to-back -back banners, and you want to hang a third one up here. I'm sure you press that all the time that, hey, no one's going to lay down here. No, no one's going to lay down. Um, this, team, this league is too competitive. The coaching is too good. The players are too good. I'm in this league for anybody just to lay down. So, nah. You got to come out every single day ready to play. And we didn't do that Saturday. We'll be better. I'll make sure that we give a better performance uh, this Thursday. Of course, because of the Thursday-Saturday game, we're here on this Monday with the season premiere. We'll be back on schedule next Wednesday at 6 and 6.30 as we get ready for the home opener. Glad to be home after so many games away from home. The Texas teams come in. And we'll be previewing that. Coach, we appreciate it. We'll talk to you in Huntsville. All right, sounds good. Appreciate it. That's Braves head coach Landon Bussey. We will step aside for two minutes. Nate Kilbert, come on down. We'll take a two-minute timeout. We'll be right back after this on the Braves Sports Network. <laughs> 